One of the great strengths of photography is the journey it takes us on. In one respect, it's an exploration of new ways of seeing, a meeting of ingenuity and artistic expression that brings us closer, both to the extraordinary world we inhabit, but also to the people we share it with. And amongst the universe of tools that we use to discover the world, there's one that stands apart. I'd argue that in terms of sheer ability to explore and delight, there's no better value than the macro. It's like you swallowed a shrinking pill and stepped into a new reality. And that's why I was so excited to take this Lauer 90 millimeter macro on a safari. Well, I'm discovering all sorts of new things um, that I thought I knew this morning. First off, it's hard to maneuver uh, next to your subject, you know, when you're maneuvering a Land Rover to do macro photography. I knew it would be difficult photographing from a vehicle most of the time, but with energy, with ambition, and with a good pair of glasses, I knew I'd find stranger things to photograph out there than ever before. But first, what makes this Lauer 90mm different, and why should I find a place for it in my bag? The clue, a little bit of the clue at least, is in the name. Full frame 2, 90mm, f2.8, CA Dreamer, Macro X2. It's a dedicated macro lens with a couple of secret weapons. It offers magnification of twice life size, a double macro. And not only that, it's a double macro that can focus at infinity, which is not always something we can take for granted on lenses of this type. It's also aprochromatic, significantly reducing chromatic aberrations, spherical aberrations, as well as improving contrast and color. It's got the same kind of mechanical feel as this 1970s medium format lens, almost nostalgic in its use of traditional metal and glass instead of more modern plastics. Only the lens hood and caps are plastic. And some reviewers say that the cap is flimsy, but honestly, I don't think it is. And perhaps Lauer's beefed it up because to me, it feels perfectly adequate. The hood sits easily on the lens and has a faint texture on the interior to prevent flare. Overall, the lens is beautifully finished with old school etched aperture, distance, and even magnification markings. It's got a rather fetching blue band around the end, and the 67 millimeter filter size is etched in above the serial number. Unusually, there's a wonderfully damped aperture ring that feels almost de-clicked with only the very slightest of detente. You could easily use it for aperture ramping, and also because it's fully manual, the time lapses without the aperture flicker you get on modern electronic lenses. Actually, it's a nice throwback to the control we used to have on film cameras. So much more intuitive and satisfying to use, like you're playing an instrument instead of using a machine. And it works well in the hand too. Switching the left hand between focus and aperture is really easy. There's another special feature to the aperture. It's got 13 blades. And unlike the older 100mm Lauer 2x macro, it has 13 blades for all of the supported mounts. And this gives the out of focus areas that special dreamy appeal that's very evident from the shots. After all, it is called the full frame dreamer. Incidentally, that odd number of blades also creates some pretty nice sunbursts. In theory, we should see 26 points. The lens is supported for Canon RF, Nikon Z, Sony E, and Leica L. But I'm holding the RF version here, and it's quite a nice change to my normal EF lenses because it's shorter and more compact, which is important for macro, as I often have to hold the camera with one hand and the subject in the other. It's not a light lens though. All that metal and glass is telling, and it's heavier than my old 100 f2.8. There's also no weather sealing, nor any electrical contacts on the metal base. At the front of the lens, there's now a front glass element to protect the working lenses inside. And this is a step up from the older 100mm 2X, which was supplied with a filter instead. 
The focus is all internal, which is great for not frightening your subjects with an extending lens. But by far the best way to focus is to choose the magnification first and then gently rock your body forward or backward until your focus peaking is actually on the subject. I love the huge focus ring. It's beautifully smooth with a very communicative feel when used to focus on small things. The throw is over 180 degrees, which is absolutely luxurious in comparison to my old Canon 100 f2.8. And it's very nice for video too. However, the lens does show a lot of focus breathing. So especially in video, you may want to keep the shots tight or static unless you're at the macro scale, but it's a really easy lens to pull focus with precisely, which is so important given the insanely narrow depth of field at two times life size. Nowadays, an all manual lens is so much more viable and easy to use on mirrorless cameras due to the inbuilt focusing assistance. At two times magnification, the focus distance is seven centimeters ahead of the front element, which places the subject just in front of the lens hood. And I found this sometimes cast shadows in brighter light, and most of the time I actually remove the hood uh, at the slight risk of introducing flare and lens artifacts. Flare and ghosting is definitely present in this lens, but I'd say it's mostly artistic and it's part of Lauer's objective to create a rather dreamy appearance with backlit subjects. The out of focus areas really do look good. With beautiful round bokeh balls and pretty nice halos as well. One important thing to consider with larger than life macro lenses is whether the magnification is a gimmick. There's a whole dark formula around magnification and the decrease in effective aperture. This means that as we magnify by changing focus, we also increase the effective F number and we'll see the image darken, depth of field change and diffraction increase. The mark of a good two times is that it can still produce a good image and the lower really doesn't disappoint. It's fantastic. It's close to flawless corner to corner at F2.8, but improves slightly at F5.6. Center sharpness is excellent at one times and improves very slightly up to f8 and then diffraction starts to have an effect. At two times, it's also very good wide open. f4 improves things a little again and after f11, diffraction appears. Bokeh is excellent on the lower with minimal halos around bokeh balls. Centering on my copy also looks great with no difference in sharpness left to right or top to bottom. And the apochromatic lens also delivers superb control of aberrations. There's no fringing, good contrast at the edges, and very little longitudinal aberration. This is a great lens for water droplets and anything with shiny, multifaceted surfaces. I'm thinking photographs of wedding rings. As I mentioned earlier, I took the Lauer on a long safari, heading down to Zululand and into a bad <laughs> tropical storm. That wasn't on purpose. But I was a little wary of using the lens in humid and torrential conditions due to the fact that it's not weather sealed. But to be honest, it stood up really well to my use case and I ended up not even thinking about it. I'm not a dedicated macro photographer. It's more accurate to say that I'm a wildlife and landscape photographer with an appreciation for macro. But it's long been a niggle that I'm missing out on so many opportunities to photograph and film at smaller scales on my trips. And my experience in the bush ended up being mixed. I was absolutely delighted by the lens, but less than delighted with my own ability to use it. I'm using the Lauer 90mm f2.8 lens on the R6. Uh, manual focus, obviously, and uh, I'm using f11 on the aperture. But the thing is blowing around in the wind. Uh, it's absolutely hopeless. Um, so what I've done is I've attached a little clamp to my uh, video head here, and I've just gently grasped one of the branches of the trees to hold it steady. And I've been able to finally get a shot, I think, of this ant 
uh, filching some nectar from, from this flower, which is fantastic. <laughs> My first little macro shot uh, with with a reasonable macro shot with the lower lens. And uh, it's been trying, trying to get these shots, I have to say. But uh, having been able to hold the branch steady is, is a game changer. And then watching that ant come back and forth to the same flower uh, and finally managing to nail the manual focus on it has been satisfying. I think I have a shot of an ant. Woo! Part of it was photographing from a car. I'm sure you'll know that it's not possible to leave the vehicle and wander around due to the risk of getting trampled or eaten in most African parks. So I was mostly photographing in picnic areas. And natural light macro photography is a dark art. It's very easy to see why lights, flashes, plants, diffusers, tripods and rails start to come into use. I don't want to use any of that stuff. Too cumbersome. And over the last few months, I've learned a lot about shooting handheld macro. Normally, I don't use a camera strap because it gets in the way for wildlife. But I do concede that it's invaluable for keeping steady with a macro lens. Pull it tight around your neck to brace the camera. Breath control is also vital. The focus plane in natural light where we need to shoot is minuscule. And any kind of wind is fatal too. And macro requires an extreme amount of patience, waiting for those tiny moments of stillness. Uh, I'm reenacting what I've seen for my YouTube channel. I think, I've been thinking about it, I think it's time to get a sign to put on Basil to indicate to people not to stop. I might be filming plant. So if you've got any ideas about what this sign should say, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below. You know, something short, sweet, that can fit on a sign that people can read, uh, that encourages them not to worry. I haven't seen a leopard. I'm going to be using this excellent lens a lot more on my upcoming adventures, and I'll share what I learn along the way in subsequent videos. In the meantime, let me know in the comments if you have any questions that I can answer, and I'll see you out there. I was hoping to see more grass.